Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you by Katib Technologies. I'm Nigel Mbaik and Brian Mokelpinson. We want to welcome you all to today's uh, Autodesk Virtual Academy, all about uh, getting some high-quality renders in Inventor Studio, um, which is a tool that you all have built into your Inventor Professionals, if that's the tool that you're using today. So we just want to make sure that, hey, you're familiar with the environment, um, you know what you have access to already, right? You don't need to use Max to get renderings, which to people's, uh, you know, delight. Um, and uh, it's already on your computer and installed uh, if you're using Inventor. Yeah. So uh, Brian's going to go over that today, the process of how to do so, create some of these renderings. Brian's been um, one of the rendering guys around here, I guess, for the last year or so. So they're definitely in good hands when it comes to uh, learning about this stuff with Brian. All right, so as you guys know, we always start off with a purpose, so why we do things, not only in the webinar, but in life. But uh, <laughs> let's stick to the webinar portion of this. And this is going to be similar to the last couple webinars, purpose of creating a good first impression with your customers. You can only create a, a first impression once, so you might as well make it uh, the best that you can uh, make it instead of sending them maybe a screenshot of your 3D model, take a little time, create create a little rendering for them and show that you appreciate or you uh, you actually care about the work that you, you produce, the the hours that you spend 3D modeling, that your team spends 3D modeling. It's 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 all about the presentation portion of it. We're all salespeople in the end. Uh, also add a sleek new look to the images on your website. So after you create that good first impression uh, start spreading it on social media because everyone's looking and finding you through you know the internet nowadays. So it's good to to have those updated as well. And lastly, uh, creating a good rendering helps you to visualize, uh, especially if you haven't. Uh, if this is a new design, helps you visualize whether you like the size of the model that you created, uh, whether you like the texture, the material, the the color even of the model you created. Uh, so for example, when after I created this rendering here, I wish I had a little bit glossier of a red. It would have made it look a little bit more <laughs> realistic there. But so now I know. So now, now I can um, go back, change my material, change the appearance to a glossier red. And it'll give me more um, a better appeal to to us and, and the customer. Uh, so goals for today and we re respect to our uh, purpose here. Uh, so I want to show you guys inside of Inventor Studio uh, how to set the scene with not just the default background picture that they have, but actually a 3D model of uh, that that's going to be in the background. Um, if you if you take a look at this one, this actually is a 3D model. It's a little harder to see because I dimmed the lights here. Uh, to really emphasize the the local lights that that I applied as well, um, which leads on to number two. I want to show you guys how to create local lights and camera views onto your model, so you can set this as a default template. So if you're a company that makes a bunch of these vehicles, these forklifts, and they're all around the same size, you can start setting your lights up to uh, shine down the same location set different camera angles so when you do renderings you can have a, maybe a front view an isometric view like this side view top bottom uh, whatever you like um, so then you don't have to keep resetting these settings over from scratch just spend a couple of minutes couple of hours to set your settings one time and then you don't have to go back and do it again and that, i'm going to show you guys how to create that template today and lastly, also, like I promised, I was going to show you guys how to create a, as I promised in, in the description, if you guys read the description, uh, how to create a turntable animation uh, of your model. So it's there is an animation portion to Inventor Studio. We'll be focusing more on the local lighting and camera views today. Uh, but if you guys would like to see the animation uh, workspace uh, inside of the studio portion, uh, feel free to suggest that in the comments, and I'll set that that next one up, uh, that one up next for next time. So, uh, but 
Today I'll just show you guys a little taste of the animation inside of Inventure Studio with the turntable. And like Nigel mentioned, if you guys have any questions, I'll go ahead and leave that in the GoToMeeting chat room. So here inside of Inventor, we have our 3D model of a background. I grabbed it off grabcad.com. Um, you guys can really grab it yourself, or you can um, create your own backgrounds, depending on where you want it to be located, if you want it inside of an office building, if you want it inside of a house, of a, of a warehouse. Uh, you can go ahead and create your own 3D model of that, or try to find it. Uh, find one that's already been created and just uh, bring it into Inventor here. And right now we have an eye part. I want to bring in you know the forklift and things like that into this model as well. So I probably want to create an assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and get to that. And I'm going to go ahead and save right off the bat. And I'm going to save it as a template. So now I'm going to start bringing in the components that I want to my Inventor Studio rendering. The first one is going to be the the uh, the floor plan, the 3D model uh, that you guys just saw. So go ahead and put one of those in here. And then the other one is going to be the forklift. And the reason I'm bringing them into a separate assembly, I created a brand new assembly, is so that we don't have to interfere with the original model by any means. It's we're pulling uh, from those models into our own brand new assembly. This guy, I wanna, I'm gonna put this uh, forklift in between this, the center of this panel here, as well as move it to the center of that panel. So then I have uh, an idea of where I can place future forklifts. So if you have future designs, I would know where a good location would be to place them uh, when I put in my lighting. So it's gonna be right in the middle of this panel in the background, you see there. And now I'm gonna start shining light uh, local lights onto this model here. And now that I have <clears throat> now that I have this uh, in place, I can go ahead and ground these two so then I don't accidentally move them later down the line. So next let's go ahead and take a look at the Inventor Studio environment. But before we do that, we do need to do one thing here in the view, which is to turn on the perspective mode to give, a, to give us that more realistic looking uh, view to our model. We don't need to touch anything else here in the view because the Inventor Studio has its own set of, of uh, settings that you can apply for your environment. So under environments, there's the Inventor Studio. And now we have a, another set of tools here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the studio lighting styles first. Now studio lighting styles, if you guys have played around with this in the view environment, is pretty much the background. You can set it as, as if you're in the country road. And it kind of gives us that um, lighter environment, especially if I display the scene image here. Uh, it's overlapping with my 3D model, but if we were to not use a 3D model and we just go straight to the image, that's that's kind of how we did it last time. I want to I want to do a different approach this time, so I won't display that. Uh, and what I'm trying to go for here is actually more of an indoor-looking warehouse maybe appeal to to this model. I wanted to really emphasize the lighting, the local lights, uh, by dimming down this room. So I'm going to choose dark sky. 
Uh, let me go ahead and before I choose that, I'm actually going to make a copy of this because I don't want to actually interfere with the actual dark sky that's already in default. So I'm going to right click and hit copy lighting style and I'll go ahead and stick with that name. It's pretty straightforward. And it's still on country road. All I need to do here is right click on the dark sky and hit active. And now uh, our lighting is uh, the copy of dark sky is active for our lighting. And of course, we can display the scene image as well. Uh, but since we're going to be pretty zoomed in here, we won't. That is not necessary. Did nothing really changed there. And we did go over exposure, rotation, and scale features like that last time. So I don't really need to touch base on it. The default is fine for these. Uh, you guys can mess around these uh, with this if you want. Um, but it's exposure. The more exposure, the brighter it is. The less, uh, the less, the darker it is. Um, so now I have a copy of the dark sky. I'm going to help go ahead and hit save, save the settings I've changed there and hit done. So we were done with the lighting styles of the studio there. Now we want to create the camera or in other words, it's where the perspective of which the rendering takes place. And you can do it two ways. You can either choose the camera and then choose the first location and then the second location of where the uh, how far away the camera is going to be. Um, and actually, it might have placed it pretty good there, but I was trying to not place it in, in the best uh, location there. But now, if we take a look at that camera that was generated over here, camera one, I'm going to set the view to the camera to see what I got. So I'm a little cut off right here. Um, so that's why I don't really suggest creating the camera that way. What I'd rather suggest is actually manually moving yourself to what you think would be a good rendering uh, image. And I'm going to go ahead and position the car in the center like that. Now I'm going to go over here to the camera, right click, and set the camera to my current view rather than going to the camera's view or going from the view to the camera. We're going to go vice versa this time and set the camera to our view. Now you notice that camera moved to where we were located. And now we can right click on it and see what that looks like. And I'm pretty happy with the location of that. So we'll go ahead and leave that camera alone. There's also different uh, settings you can mess around with as well. Uh, this allows you to focus on a particular center point and makes everything else around it uh, fuzzy. Oh, to give you a little bit more emphasis, I guess, or more of a dramatic effect on the center. Um, but I do want to focus more on the dramatic lighting today, but I just want to point out that this option is there for you guys. All right. And you can set up multiple cameras as well. You don't have to just set up one camera angle. So if you wanted a side view, you can go ahead and create a, a camera. You can just right click and create a new camera from the current view. And it creates uh, a camera angle like that. And when you go to render, you can either choose this camera, that camera, whichever camera that you have created uh, for your rendering. So now we knocked off camera. Let's go ahead and create some local lights. And that's why we chose the dark sky, so we can really emphasize these local lights here. Now, if we click on local lights, we have these two options available for us here. We have the point, which I'll show you. Uh, after the spotlight. So if you can imagine a flashlight, uh, one of the more industrial ones that you can actually use in heavy duty situations. Imagine uh, one of those hanging from the ceiling. That's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to have a spotlight shine down, kind of like a car show or kind of like a, a light shining down on someone on stage. It'll kind of be like that effect that will give this car here. So with that selected, it's a little dark to see on the floor here, but I'm going to go ahead and choose maybe this corner of the car. And then I can choose where I want, how far away I want the uh, the flashlight to be or the spotlight to be. I'm gonna make it just a little bit higher than the car here, but not too high. And that'll give us a little preview of how how light that is. And it's, it's actually, a, under underestimating the light here when we actually go to render it, it's going to be a little bit brighter than it looks like here. Uh, 
So just keep that in mind. You can also adjust the illumination here to make it even more bright, as well as the color. Uh, and I like to drag this out just a little bit more to about maybe around 300 in this case. And then once I hit OK, now we have one of our lights that are located here under local lights. And instead of having to, if I want to create another light, which I am going to, I, instead of having to create a new one from scratch, I'm just going to click on the light we have, right click, and I'm going to copy that light. Now I'm going to right click in space to paste that light. We have it there selected, right click in space, move that light over to maybe the back or the right side of this vehicle. Hit OK. And now we have light one and the copy of light one shining down on our car or on our forklift here. Now I want to create more. So I'm going to hold control, select both of them, copy both of them, paste both of them, move both of them, and they're going to go back here some more. So now we have four lights uh, shining down onto the car. We can also make these angled. They don't just have to be straight up and down. So if I click on this slide in particular, right click on it and hit edit, I can actually move this. And it's going to start to angle my light uh, towards the center there to add a, its own dramatic effect there. Might want to move it back just a little bit. There we have a couple of lights shining it down on this guy here. All right, so I think that's it for my local lights that I wanted to set. And we do want to see a little preview before we go any further to see if we need to adjust anything here. So what we want to do is now go to render image. We knocked out the lighting styles, camera, and local lights. Render image. In render image, we can choose a standard uh, aspect ratio that's traditionally used. Uh, I like to go with the 1920 and 1080. This fits well on our desktops and things like that. Uh, you can either choose the current view that I'm in now. I could be out here, and I don't really want the rendering of that. So I'm going to choose either camera one or camera two. I'll choose camera one that we set up, and it brings us into that nice location. And then the lighting style, we chose the copy of the dark sky. Let me go ahead and leave it like that. Uh, it's always good to have an output um, location for your model because after the rendering is done, let's say it's a 45 minute rendering, you would have to come back to your, after it's done, you'd have to come back and hit save and choose a location. You can just go ahead and choose where it's gonna be saved here rather than uh, later. Also, there is render uh, time. So you can either do it by iteration. 32 is gonna give us a very um, quick and dirty rendering while maybe something more along the lines of, if you saw on the presentation, the PowerPoints, those were 250 to 500 uh, iterations, and those took about 30 to 45 minutes. And then there's a render time, so if you, if you, want to, if you already know about how long it might take, uh, you can choose adjust that there. And I'll go ahead and leave these uh, settings to what it's defaulted to right now. I'll go ahead and hit render. And this is the test to see what we'll be looking at right off the bat. And it was a little off-centered there. I had to full screen it. Now let's take a look at what this is going to look like. And it's going to be loading up here. You always have the option to pause your render at the top right-hand corner of the screen with the X. And you can save it as is if you're already happy with it. If you chose too long of a time and you want to, and you're already happy with the design or the render, you can stop it there and save it. But if you wanted to keep going, just hit that um, teacup or teapot, looking simple there. 
um, for it to keep rendering. And we can now see maybe where I can put lighting. Maybe I can put more in the front there. Or maybe the, if the camera angle was a little off, I could adjust that there. Uh, but it's a good preview of what it's going to look like. And you can see that the lighting is a little bit more light here than it was in the uh, environment. So I'll go ahead and stop this. Uh, I'm kind of happy with where that's going there. Might create one more lighting here for the, the front. So just a copy and paste. And uh, what I've run into while creating a bunch of lights was the when you create about seven or eight lights, you actually you actually uh, some of them don't actually turn on anymore. They just it's, there's like a light limit. So I just I would keep that in mind if you guys are wondering why your light's not turning on. It might just have hit that limit. So maybe it was just a bug I ran into, but just just in case you guys run into that, I might have experienced the same thing. So I just added one more light there in the front, and now that fixed my front light problem there. Next, I want to show you guys the other local light, which was the which was the point light. And if you have a light bulb on your model, you can actually turn and like we do here, you can actually have this one represent that. So I'll go ahead and select the point light, and I'll select the, the target that I want to place it in, and the position. I'm going to select the same spot. And now, since it's, it's uh, looking at the front, it's, it's uh, in position. Now I just got to go to the right view to move it into the, the environment there. So let's go ahead and... Right-click on that, hit move, and move that over to the center there. Mm -hmm. Looks like I've created it off just a little bit there. Go ahead and move that one more time. or maybe the, the target position was off. So, well, we can see by doing a rendering to see if it was actually created properly there. So we're gonna go ahead and render image, camera one, do a quick and dirty uh, render to see what this is gonna look like and how that affects our model. And I might wanna turn up the intensity of that a little bit to, to emphasize the, the, the light there. Oh, one more thing before we do that. The uh, I wanted to change the color of this instead of a white color. This is more of a it's actually a yellow color, but when you put in yellow, it actually looks a little too yellow. Uh, if that makes sense. Uh, so what I found was actually this orange works well with these kind of lights. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that orange color. Hit save. Now it's kind of giving this that warm light feel there. And it's a little bit more exaggerated than the, the other lights here, as you can tell. So now let's go ahead and render this image. Go ahead and see what that's going to give us there. And rendering does take uh, computing power of your local, local computing power. Uh, even when I try rendering a 30 to 45 minute render, I try to do other things on the internet. It bogs it down a little bit, depending on how good your computer is. but I mean, you, I would I would try to just if you uh, go to lunch, just do a, a rendering before lunch, and then come back and you have something uh, that you didn't have to fight with uh, when you're while you're searching or while you're working on the internet or something like that. So uh, if you can start to see, there's a little bit of that warm color here at the top of the car, whereas there's also the lighting here that we added in the front. Uh, we have like a glossy floor here because this is the 3D model that we chose. Um, it's a little harder to, if it was a little bit brighter, you can see the background as something uh, that looks a little bit more like realistic rather than just a, a, a picture background that we usually get inside of Inventor. So that's that's something I definitely recommend, especially 
if it's in a more vibrant environment, you can really see the details of the background. All right, so I won't let it run all the way, but I just want to give you guys a good idea. And you can see the little specs on the screen. The more it renders, the more the, it gets rid of those specs. All right. So that's it for the the um, the, the high quality images here of the model. I do want to show you guys the turntable uh, capabilities uh, for uh, or inside of Inventor Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and open up. I'm going to go ahead and open up another one of these uh, cranes here or forklifts here. And then what I'm going to do is go first to the um, first to changes to perspective. And then I'm going to go into my Vendor Studio environment. And I'm not going to add any settings or anything like that. I just want to show you guys how this is done since we've done all those lightings and settings in the previous example. So in this case, we're going to go over here to animations, right click and create a new animation. And you can see down below here that it was created. We can right click and activate it. And by activating it, it gives us the timeline down here. It gives us by default a 30 second uh, animation timeline. I actually want to lower that down to about 10 seconds. And this is the velocity in which the, the camera travels there. And that's it for the animation uh, state there. Now I want to create the camera setting in which this is going to rotate around. So I want to make sure this is centered. Get it ready to animate. I'm going to right click on the cameras, create a camera from view, and then right click on the camera and animate the camera. Once I animate the camera, it gives me this window to choose, or I'm going to go to the turntable tab to, ch to check the turntable capability. And first, uh, we see that it's going to want to rotate about the x or uh, x axis there. I'm going to change that to the y axis so it makes more sense. We're not going to rotate sideways there. Uh, and the revolutions, this is one revolution per minute. Since we're doing 10 seconds, it's going to only re revolve 10 out of 60 or one out of six uh, revolutions around this model. So instead, we're going to check the plus and minus symbol. So it'll do a whole revolution around no matter what uh, duration, starting duration times that you have set down here. So we're going to start at zero seconds, which is the beginning, and end at 10 seconds. So if we had a one a 10 second uh, revolution or one revolution per 10 seconds, it'll do a, a regular turn. If you have a one revolution for one second, it's going to go really fast. So, so now that we have that uh, set, we'll go ahead and start from the beginning here. And then when I hit play, you can see it start the camera start to revolve around the model there. And if you actually want to see what it looks like, you can follow along with the camera by going to camera one there. Now let me hit play. And we're on a ride with the camera one. And that's what the animation will look like. And if you want to publish this, you can hit the record animation. Same thing with these, uh, the settings there. It's going to be a little bit longer because it's going to uh, record every single um, step along the way uh, rather than just one rendering it's going to be a multiple rendering so if you create a high quality one of this expect it to take a, a while and then once you create that you get something along the lines of oh okay uh it was oh there it is <laughs> So I'll show you guys this. So this was at a lower quality rendering, so I can get it get to it faster. But it's a rendered animation rather than just a regular 
animation. All right. Uh, yeah, so to recap, we went over the local lightings, created a template inside of uh, Inventor. Uh, what I could have added also was to remove the car and then hit save. So then we have all these uh, lightings and camera angles and things like that, as well as the model um, in that template. So every time you bring in a vehicle of that size, you can just locate it in there. You don't have to change any of the settings uh, anymore because you already spent the time to do it this first time. And that template should be good to go. Uh, we went over your local lights, camera settings, uh, scene settings, things like that, ways to make your lights more dramatic and ways to make uh, your your model look better in, in that light. So um, again, thank you, Brian, for being here today uh, and every day, I guess, helping us with that stuff. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next Thursday at 10 a.m. Actually, thanks again, everybody, for, for showing up today. We'll talk to you all soon. Thanks, guys.